Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Department of Transportation forms UAS Registration Task Force, Evergreen Aerospace Museum Water Park faces foreclosure, Bugatti 100 replica race plane completes second flight unscathed. I'm Brie Cross, it's October 20th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. U.S. Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox and FAA Administrator Michael Huerta have announced the creation of a multifaceted task force to develop recommendations for a registration process for unmanned aircraft systems. The group will advise the department on which aircraft should be exempt from registration due to a low safety risk, including toys and certain other small UAS. The task force will also explore options for a streamlined system that would make registration less burdensome for commercial UAS operators. The task force may make additional safety recommendations as it deems appropriate. Secretary Fox directed the group to deliver its report by November 20th. Secretary Fox said registration would expose people to the rules and ensure accountability. However, it is unclear which rules he was referring to, as the FAA did not comply with the congressionally mandated September 30th deadline for publishing these rules. The Secretary did make it clear that noncompliance with the registration requirement will be recognized as a violation of the registration law when it's enacted. The process of forming a UAS registration law is just starting, and we expect more specific information as the task force works through a variety of complex issues. The Evergreen Space Museum and the Wings and Waves Water Park will be sold November 30th in a foreclosure auction on the steps of the Yamhill County, Oregon Courthouse, according to Yamhill County Sheriff Tim Svensson. The sheriff has received a writ of execution from the Yamhill County Circuit Court, allowing the sale to go forward. The Yamhill Valley News Register reports that the writ was issued after the court found that the museum and water park's owner, the nonprofit Michael King Smith Education Foundation, has not made payments on $1.9 million in debt to their builder, Hoffman Construction of Portland. On its website, the museum posted a statement saying that, quote, the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum is an independent, nonprofit organization. Museum management is actively working on solutions to address the situation with the landlord. Visitor count at both the museum and the water park is strong, and the museum is profitable. We will continue to operate as usual and look forward to welcoming our guests." End quote. After the break, Bugatti 100 Replica completes a successful flight. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Last August, we reported that the replica Bugatti 100P race plane had made its first flight, but not without a problem. During the landing, a rudder pedal broke, which led the airplane to veer off the runway and incur damage as it nosed over. Now we can report that on October 17th, this magnificent replica of an aircraft that was originally built in the golden age of air racing in the late 1930s has made a successful flight without incident. The Bugatti 100P racer was designed to be the fastest racer of its day, but the interference of World War II caused this magnificent airplane to be hidden until after the war. It ultimately ended up in EAA's museum in Oshkosh and is there today for all to view. However, this one and only airplane actually never flew. 
The effort to build a replica Bugatti 100P airplane by a group of dedicated builders in Tulsa, Oklahoma, reached a significant milestone last weekend with the second flight, which was the first completely successful flight of the replica. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. The 43rd Annual Copper State Fly-In and Education Exposition will be held October 22nd through the 24th at the Casa Grande Municipal Airport, located halfway between Tucson and Phoenix. This major event provides a variety of activities for both pilots and non-aviation individuals. It's an educational experience for persons of all ages. More than 500 aircraft are expected to fly in. The Arizona Aircraft Expo and Ownership Conference will be held on October 23rd and the 24th in Scottsdale, Arizona. It features today's most advanced aircraft at one location. Arizona's leading aircraft dealers are working together to create the 8th Annual Arizona Aircraft Expo, where the latest models of general aviation aircraft will be displayed at one venue. The Southeast Regional Fly-In takes place in Evergreen, Alabama, October 23rd through the 25th. This is the 25th season of this event, and they're planning for the event to be bigger than ever. There will be aircraft judging, a fly market, FAA seminars, vendors, and a fly-by air show. It all takes place at Middleton Field. And if it's a full-blown air show you're looking for, head to Lake Charles, Louisiana, for the Chenault International Air Show taking place on October 24th and 25th. It's being held on Chenault International Airport and features an impressive list of air show performers that includes the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds. This is going to be an action-packed weekend. After these messages, NASA has issued a Journey to Mars report. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. NASA has released a report titled NASA's Journey to Mars Pioneering Next Steps in Space Exploration. The report says the journey to Mars crosses three thresholds, each with increasing challenges. NASA is taking an incremental approach to managing the challenges. AAR Corporation held meetings with students of the Ivy Tech Aviation Technology Department at Smithfield in Fort Wayne, Indiana to discuss the company's staffing needs. It's reported that AAR is expanding operations in Indiana and needs aircraft mechanics, engineers, and pilots. The International Space University has named Dr. Edwin Buzz Aldrin as its new chancellor. ISU has been very selective in choosing chancellors who are considered by its students as extremely important figures in the space world. Astronaut Buzz Aldrin certainly fits that description. Hilton Head Airport has just been awarded over $13 million in FAA grant funds to assist with safety projects. The FAA's Airport Improvement Program provides grants for the planning and development of public use airports with commercial services. Embraer has released its market outlook for Europe and the Commonwealth of Independent States. They forecast that these markets will demand 1,540 new aircraft in the 70 to 130 seat jet segment valued at some $72 billion over the next 20 years. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The takeover of Sikorsky Aircraft by Lockheed Martin, which is acquiring the helicopter division from United Technologies, 
will not affect the company's participation in the Army's future vertical lift program, according to a spokesperson. It's reported that U.S. Army Acquisitions Chief Heidi Hsu said last week at the United States Army Conference in Washington that, quote, you've got the Boeing-Sikorsky team competing against Bell. As far as I know, there's two separate teams, end quote. Lockheed is also providing parts for the Bell V-280 Valor under the Demonstrator Program. Prime contractor Bell has agreements with 11 other companies to provide parts for the new tilt rotor aircraft. Bell said through a representative that its agreement with Lockheed had been amended to clarify that the Sikorsky effort would be continued after the $8 billion deal is finalized. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.